five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, when I get to know somebody, I tend to be goofy with them. I go, I can goof with somebody I've, I've known a while. I can't. It's hard for me to goof with somebody that I just met, you know? Mm-hmm. Is that true for you, too? Yes. You can be a little bit silly, let your yeah. hair down a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Uh, although you cut all my hair off, so I can't let it down. <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, so we've had John Goodwin on for so many times. I, I've never met him in person, but I feel like we're friends, even though I haven't met him in person. So I goof with him a lot. Mm-hmm. But his wife, Emily, I think we've had her on once before. Yeah, yeah okay, we have. So I'm She's still wonderful. not there. I'm still not at that. We can goof more. I can't like tease her about eating scorpions and that kind of thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Goodwin is uh, an, is active with the Independent Book Publishers Association as a contest judge for the Benjamin Franklin Awards. She's an active member of the Audio Publishers Association. By the way, I'm a big fan of audiobooks, and the best audiobook I ever listened to was put out by uh, Galaxy Press. And, yes, and, exactly. And that was... Uh, uh, Battlefield Earth, right? Yes, Battlefield. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that is a yep. that is an award winning thing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. She's also vice president of the Hollywood Christmas Parade. Uh, she was inducted as an honorary commander in the Los Angeles Air Force. Really? Uh, she's a space and missile space and missile center. What is that? In the and, Los Angeles Air Force Space and Missile. Oh, center. I see. I see. Okay. That's my favorite part of this whole thing. Well, this is so cool. Donald Trump is off, uh, starting a space force, right? That's right. He what, is. What are those guys going to actually do when they're up there? Uh, I don't know, but maybe Emily might want to. That's my job. That'd be cool. Sit in the rocket ship, floating around <laughs> all day long, just waiting for bad guys. <laughs> yeah. You know they're never going to show up. That's right. Emily Goodwin. Good morning, Emily. How you doing? Well, hello. Good to be back with you. <laughs> Where are you? I am in Los Angeles right now. Yeah. How's the weather today? Oh, boy. No? It's not good? <laughs> it's cooling down. It's only like 90. It's, it's wow. A, it's in the 90s? That's cool? Well, it was over 100 for several days. Was it really? Us too. Yesterday, it reached yeah. 102. Oh, my gosh. So, so today, um, how, how's John, first of all? Oh, uh, John's great. He says hello. Oh, that, oh that's good. Uh, and and you you're talking about audio books today? Yes, audio books and and uh, writers of the future, which we now also have out as an audio book. You do? Yes. I didn't know that. What? Let me find yeah. it. Where is it? I want to hear it because I, I love well, audio books. You, you, you can get it on Audible. We did it with recorded books. Okay. So uh, it's it's available. Uh, you can see it right there on Audible. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm getting it. And Let me... uh, do do all the uh, does each author read their own story or does somebody else do that? No, no. Uh, recorded books brought in different actors for the, for the. Uh, we did four of the different writers of future volumes. We did the last one, volume 34, mm-hmm. and then we did uh, the the three previous ones. Oh really? They're available now. Yeah. Well, I. Well, that's I'm, exciting. That's new. And I will, I will listen, even though I've read the stories in volume thirty-four. I, I will do that. I'm putting, a, I put the what? cover on there right now. You're, you're, you're a big audiobook fan out there. People like you is the reason why the audiobook industry keeps increasing twenty percent in the last few. But you know, I, um. Let's see. I commute to work by by my own power. I drive, in other words. Uh, if I was in New York, I could read a book, but I couldn't listen to one. I'm and I could read yeah. and, and listen in New York, but down here I have to listen. I can't read it when I'm driving, obviously, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, that's what they're good for. So did you did you produce these the same way you produced Battlefield Earth with all those effects and that beautiful landscape of sound and all that? They're, they were done a little differently because they were done through recorded books, but they still sound amazing. There are four different uh, readers on them. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. well, this is a great step forward. So is there a plan to get the, the previous versions, or are you, the, are you starting with 34? Well, we, we've done 34, 33, 32, and 31. Oh, okay, so okay. We started, yeah, we started with that, and then we'll, we'll see how that goes, and we'll take it from there. And, and are you, like, the overseer? Are you the person to, uh, to uh, oversee all the projects? I, I don't oversee the making of the audio book. Oh, you don't? I, I work in the public affairs, but uh, so I... I get the word out there. So, no, Robin mentioned. You know, I talk to people like you. <laughs> before we went on the air, and this is maybe kind of a um, a, 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 
let's see, a promotion for us here at the radio station. We have uh, Johnny Siegel coming in from uh, the the Golden Age Theater down in Clearwater, I believe is where they are. And, they, and they're coming in, yeah, I think, I think a week from today, and they'll be doing a live, like a radio play with one of the stars. So much fun. What a treat. Is that you? I mean, do you do that too? We do that in Los Angeles, yes. And we've also taken our show around the world, but... Wow, that's great. You're going to have a blast with Joni. She does a great show. She's our East Coast representative over there, and she, she puts on the theater shows over there, over in Florida, and she travels up and down the East Coast. But, yes, I do that in Los Angeles. We've also taken our show out around around the world and all over. I mean, we've taken it now, Joni came up. Joni came up and did the same thing um, when we were in a different studio maybe 10 years ago. It's been a long time. And she and she brought up the audio books from L. Ron Hubbard, the the Pulp Fiction books, and oh yeah, oh my gosh, and they went like hotcakes. I mean, we gave them away that we couldn't we couldn't give them away quick enough. I mean, quicker than that it was everybody wanted one. Yeah, it's one of those forms of entertainment that'll just never go away. I mean, back in the you know thirties and forties, before you even had television, doing the old radio theater was the main form of entertainment, and. You know, you come forward today, and, and people are still thoroughly enjoying that form of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the the uh, the audiobooks are are they available also as CDs? Yes, they are. the The audiobooks you can get any of those Pulp Golden Age audiobooks at GalaxyPress.com or on Amazon, Audible. They're all they're definitely available and out there. You oh. just they're the L. Ron Hubbard stories from the Golden Age series. Um, tell me about the, the upcoming uh, book, the one that's not out yet. You, we had a couple of, uh, I guess, emails regarding uh, people who were entering it. or, or we, We've promoted it, as you know, a lot. Um, is there anything we need to know? For, for those who, who are local, do, do me a favor, if you, if you could, Emily. Talk to them a little bit, because I've tried to uh, make sure that they know that this is a great way for a writer and an illustrator, or, or an illustrator, to be discovered and to perhaps have their name in a place where they, it could, you know, catapult their careers. Yes, absolutely. So this is the Writers and Illustrators of the Future. This is the contest that was started back in 1984, the writer side of the contest, started back in 1984 by Elon Hubbard, still sponsored by him. And it's, it is like the most amazing uh, contest. It's free to enter for anybody who's an aspiring author or aspiring illustrator. And if you can enter four times a year, the whole contest is broken out into four quarters. And, you know, every year there's a first, or every quarter there's a first, second, third place winner. And at the end of the year, all 12 of those, you know, the first, second, third place for each of the four quarters in the year get published in an anthology called. L. Ron Hubbard presents writers of the future, and it includes all the winning illustrations as well. And it is just—it's free to it's enter. It's really awesome. And yeah. people from over 135 countries have entered, and this has been going for over 35 years. And it's just such an amazing opportunity because there's so much talent out there, and they just—you know—people don't always have a, a voice or a platform right. to be able to have their voice heard. So this was done. Uh, it's set up for that reason so the underdog basically has a place where they can submit their work and be heard and the judges are very high caliber and that's what's oh, yeah. really amazing about that because the judges will take each piece of artwork and each story and go over it and then they will offer suggestions uh, if uh, the uh, writer or the artist does not make it for one quarter they offer them constructive suggestions and a lot of encouragement to keep entering yes that's that's correct and and these names uh, they're, they're such big giants in the field, you know, you have the Brandon Sanders, if you like science fiction fantasy, you've got Brandon Sanderson and Orson Scott Card, he wrote Ender's Game, which was made into a movie, Tim Powers, who wrote a book on Stranger Tides, which is, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of big names, those are the guys that will be viewing the stories, and they they really do, the, they really into doing this contest, because for them, it's a pay it forward, because, you know, Someone usually helps and and gives that person a helping hand so they can make it into this industry, and this is their way of 
yeah. paying it forward and finding the new talent. Robin, Robin was mentioning the the coaching um, that happens when uh, when a writer enters and maybe gets c- close but not close enough, and they need a little uh, coaching. We had an author. Yeah. We had an author on that w- benefited from that. He had entered the contest, didn't win, but got some feedback that changed what he wrote. And then the next year, he entered it, or the next quarter rather, he entered it again. With the mm-hmm. changes, and uh, he was he was published, and uh, it changed everything for him. It was a it was yep. a big boost to his career. Oh yeah, that's happened so many times. In fact, Kevin J. Anderson, who's one of the top sci-fi writers, you know, he just is churning stuff out all the time on Star Wars and Dune, and and uh, he, you know, he entered the contest twelve times, and he got critiques and so forth, and he finally eventually got so good and he proed he called we call it proed out because he uh, got professional sales and he was no longer qualified to enter but he definitely uh credits his success to writers of the future and he's been so successful he's now a judge for the contest is that but, right yeah and, that's interesting yeah, yeah. And, uh, that- and there was there's a guy there's a guy who won this year and he's a winner he'll be coming out for and being he'll be published in volume 35 and this Man entered the contest forty-seven times. Wow! Won. Wow! Yes, I can't well, wait to meet him. Well, that that so shows how perseverance makes a big difference for somebody. I mean, if you yes. want something, you're going to keep trying to to make sure it happens for you. And what I love about it is that there's nothing self-serving on your end. Um, right. The uh, there's so many contests out there where there's a fee. And I'm always reluctant to help promote them because I don't know. I don't know anything about them. I mean, I, I got to know you guys. Yeah. Like, I, like I said in the intro, I feel like we're friends and we've spoken to each other so much. Yeah. Well, we are. And uh, what's uh, really wonderful is that now that in, in the era of the acceptance of computers and online publishing, people can actually self-publish their own books and still pitch it yes. to uh, already established publishers and that's one of the uh, great things about writers of the future is that you're able to give those authors and those illustrators a stepping stone into the big time yes and that's what's amazing about it and there are more opportunities now i think for someone who wants to you know break in with writing and you have bloggers that can help promote you and all kinds of things you know, links to your Amazon page and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, for the writers of the future, I mean, it's just something that, um, like I said earlier, it was started by L. Ron Hubbard, and he actually, back back way earlier, and even in the in the 40s, he would, when he was in Ketchikan, Alaska, he was um, hosting a show up there on KTKN Radio. Oh, wow. And he started a contest called the Golden Pen Award, where he was having aspiring authors submit to... Uh, stories into the radio station and he was giving them the Golden Pen Award. Well, fast forward 75 years from, you know, and uh, here we are and he's, this contest is running and it's called Writers of the Future now, but uh, the actual grand prize award that we give out is called the Golden Pen Award now. So it's just something that felt very strongly about giving that author a helping hand. Oh, uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the other things I had in my intro that you're with the uh, the Benjamin Franklin Awards and the the Los Angeles Air Force Space and Missile Center? Yeah. What are those? What are those yeah. things? What What do you do? Well, okay. So with the with the Inter, uh, Independent Book Publishing Association, I am a judge for the uh, Benjamin Franklin Awards. So that's also for independent publishers and new authors who submit their work. It's it's very different for writers of the future. It's it's a, it's a contest, but it's another way for people to get awards for their work. And, you know, it's something that I've been helping out with as a volunteer for my fourth year now that I'll be going into on that. And then on the Los Angeles Air Force Base, so that was a surprise for me. It was quite an honor. Um, that happened this year, actually. I've been working with the uh, my local uh, Los Angeles Air Force Base, the Space and Missile System Center, uh, which is near LAX, and I've uh, been working with them for some years, obviously helping some of their aspiring authors. And um, I, as, as was mentioned earlier, I am the vice president for the Holiday Christmas Parade, so right, right. I bring in different people to come participate in the parade. So I've brought the uh, 
every single year uh, I've brought the uh, Los Angeles Air Force for representation in the parade, and which airs nationally and it airs on the Armed Forces Network. And just after um, several years of working with them, uh, they invited me as an honorary commander, which is like a, it's a program connecting the Air Force with the community and uh, definitely a, a big honor for me. And uh, I was very nice. pleased when they invited me. And so I will be going out there Wednesday morning for a another event. Nice. Do you ever voice audiobooks yourself? No, I haven't done audiobooks myself. I, uh, I just wrote them. No. <laughs> you, you write them. That was my question. So you're an author as well. I'm not an author. Oh, okay. I thought you said you write them. I. No, no. I, I, I promote them. Oh, promote. Okay, promote them. Yes. Promote, I promote them. Uh, I write their press releases and articles. <laughs> so I could, I could, I could get it today. Then I could just go. I could go to uh, Aud Audible, which I have it. I have an Audible account, so I just go there. Perfect. And I can download the the book today. Yeah, Writers of the Future, Volume Thirty Four. Wow. Wow. Now what? And it, it recently became a national bestseller. So we're very excited. So when a person does win the contest, whether it's quarterly or a grand prize winner for an author or an illustrator, what is next on their list that you mentor them for? Okay. Well, that's where the that's where the fun really starts. Once they've won, so the at the end of the year, the Twelve winners, like we mentioned earlier, they get published in the annual anthology. But in addition to that, um, right now it's every April. The winners from the contest, all of the twelve writers, the first, second, third place winners, and the illustrators, the twelve of them, they all get flown wherever they are in the world. They get flown out to Hollywood for a week-long workshop with the judges of the contest, who will also be out here, and they learn. The, about the craft of writing, the business of writing. They learn how to make it in the field. They learn technical. They, each of the judges give them different aspects of the business and the craft, and they really get a, a lot of information. And at the end of the week, we, it all culminates in a big awards gala where we, you know, they all go on stage. It's literally like the Oscars for new writers and it's a big Hollywood event and they all get announced and then we announce the grand prize winner uh, for both the writer and the illustrator and they will take home the biggest trophy and an additional check for five thousand dollars wow and once they yeah and then after the event is done and all the workshops then we send them home we send them out on book signing tours and you know send them book them on media basically help any way we can in launching their careers oh that's really marvelous so then once they have yeah. other stories written or other artwork assignments illustrated you're still there for the mentorship process to allow them to meet other authors or illustrators or publishers and agents yeah we'll help them any way we can and anytime they get a new book they'll send it in to us and in our offices on right on hollow boulevard there we have a writers of future lounge and we all the you'll, you can go in that lounge and it, it's just a huge shelves wall to walls you know shelving of all the books that that these winners have published huh. and there are so many <laughs> there's they've published between them from all the the winners like over five thousand books and novels and short stories so they've been productive <laughs> Um, our, our guest is Emily Goodwin, and she is the uh, the Vice President of Public Affairs for Galaxy Press, and she's talking about the audiobooks. They just recently released um, The Writers of the Future, Volume 34, 33, 32, and 31, I think you said, right, as audiobooks? That's correct, let me, yes. Let me hit the button here, see if I can hear a little bit Jack of it. Jack Bow, Daily here. News, 5 February, 2053. Swedish hiker dies on trek. Peter Friedel of Sweden died Monday evening while trekking near Sapa. His death is attributed to swelling of the brain Ooh. caused by a fall earlier in the day. See, there you go. Joran Nilsson, a friend did with you, him. Did online. you download the audio? No, no, no. I was just playing the sample that they have on Amazon. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, there you <laughs> yeah. uh, this, this is a little intense, that part. <laughs> yeah. uh, the great thing about the audiobooks are is that 
in the very beginning, they used to be for the uh, uh, non-sighted. And now right. with, with people traveling, going overseas flights, uh, commuting back and forth to work, maybe more than a half hour a day or something like that, uh, this is really a fabulous opportunity for them to get in some reading and you really make it exciting with the sound effects and things like that like in uh, battlefield earth yes yeah that's you know if we can get the kids reading too and if this is going to help and get them into stories and reading then i think it's a great thing a lot of people love to read and a lot of people are very busy these days so this gets you know, allows them to keep getting their stories in. But this also encourages the children to read out loud, whether it's an older sibling right. reading to a younger sibling or the right. younger sibling just learning how to read. You're also encouraging them to put their own personality into the storytelling. Yes, exactly. And as I mentioned earlier on those Elmer Hubbard stories from the Golden Age, the one that Joni will be coming in to perform next week, those have the book and the audio book, and the audio book is on a bridge that exactly matches the book. So, you know, we've had it where, you know, English, even, even English second language students will listen while they're reading, and you can, you know, you hear the words as they're going on the page. Right, right. And it helps them, you know, whether it's English second language or they're just trying to learn how to read better, that helps them. That, yeah, that's exactly what I do when I'm trying to, but failing at. <laughs> I, I don't mean English, but I mean listening to other languages. So, so um, real quick, I want to ask you something about the Christmas parade. We are not too far from Disney World, and they have a news announcement this morning that they are have already started on a lot of their Christmas stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's July, and we and we have a, and we have a Christmas news release. Do you start this? Do you start this early with the parade? Yes. Oh, we do. Really? I know it, it feels so awkward in the middle of summer and it's over 90 degrees and we're talking about Christmas, but you have to plan an event like that uh, months in advance. Uh, you truly instill hope in the people that write and the people that illustrated be because sometimes people are afraid to do that for fear that their family or friends might say, oh, this is nice, but it's not so good. Yeah, unfortunately, you have that out there, and, you know, if, if people out there want to write, and a lot of people, you know, want, just just submit to the contest, because, you know, when you submit, your name gets taken off, nobody sees whose story it is, you really have nothing to lose, and there are more people out there that have amazing talent than people allow them to think, and it's just important that if you have that dream, that you should go for it, Right. and this is a good place to start, and that's why... We have so many of these amazing judges that encourage people to enter this contest because it is such a good way Absolutely. for them to get their start and see that they have talent. Yeah, and the yeah, and as you know, we speak to a lot of authors at every level of success, whether they just published their first self-published book or whether they've got to deal with Simon and Schuster. I, we we get them mm -hmm. all. And and uh, for those of you who like to listen to those interviews, because it's kind of what you want to do. Uh, if you are um, a writer of the science fiction genre, um, please uh, don't let this opportunity pass you. Um, this this yes. is a great opportunity for you to not only perhaps win a prize, but to get some feedback from people who, like Robin says, it's not going to be your mother saying everything is good. Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> right. and it's not going to be your, it's not going to be your jealous friend who says everything is bad. It's going right. to it's going to be really serious good good feedback to help you uh, improve as a writer. Um, or if you're already there, then then you'll hit the jackpot and and you'll be uh, at that award ceremony that happens what every April is that when you do it April? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. See, you're right. You're right. There's nothing to lose, so people should just enter. Yeah. So the website for Thank that you. is um, what is uh, what? You go to writersofthefuture.com. Writers of writers the future. Of the future and it says right. It'll take you right through right there. Okay. How to enter the contest. And as far as the audio books, um, you, do we go to uh, galaxypress.com for that or goldenagetheater.com? Uh, you go to you go to audible.com or Amazon. Old Audible. Okay. And I found that on Amazon. Yeah. That's where I got that from. Emily, thank you for being on the air with us. Good to hear from you again. And, uh, and tell John we said hi. Will do. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. Rescues are done for the day in Thailand with four more boys taken out of a flooded cave complex. So that's eight rescued now. 
with four more and their coach still in there. It's understood two divers are accompanying each of the children as they dive their way through dark, tight, winding passages. None of the boys have any diving experience. The mission commander confirms the four boys rescued Sunday are doing well in the hospital. Foxes. Simon Owen, the search is suspended while divers rest and oxygen supplies are replenished along the escape route. A 91-year-old woman is killed when a helicopter crashes into her condominium building in Williamsburg, Virginia. Richard Bridge lives nearby. I was running toward the building and all of a sudden it just blew like a big bomb dropped, disintegrated. Police and firefighters are working to find and identify the pilot in the wreckage. Fox News. We report, you decide. You've got lots of engines in your life. Cars, yard equipment, ATVs, motorcycles, watercraft, you name it. And they all use fuel and oil. 